I have those awning lights, so when I turn them on, they give you some lighting for your outside patio area. But, um, especially with our awnings, if it's a little windy or you're concerned about it, or you're not going to be here when the awning's out, it'd be a good idea to put them away and then you don't have to worry about the wind taking them and damaging them. I think on Saturday we had three inches of rain in just like an hour, so we got a lot of a lot of moisture sitting here. This kind of rectangular looking guy. That's going to do almost all of our, it's going to do our entry door. It's going to do all of our compartments. It's also going to be our, our chassis key or our driving key. This uh, larger rectangular key, that simply does our deadbolt. So that's this top lock on the door. That's only job is to do with the deadbolt. And then this round key, this round key does the um, engine cover, you know, in the bedroom floor. It does that hatch. And I think that's all, and this one is all it does. So fuel fill, uh, you're going to have access to fill your fuel on either side. So right here on both sides. So no matter how you pull into the island, uh, you'll be able to, to do fuel filling behind that door. Uh, this compartment, uh, mostly big overall storage. Here, I have a pass through that I can open up, and we can get into a plug in to uh, an outlet up here as well, and um, and then this 12 volt uh, 12 volt location here, and our you know our compartment lights will all be on switches um, at the light here in each area. And this one is just a big open storage area. No jobs or tricks in that one. Same here. This one, this one we have water. So your fresh water tank is, is down here. And so this will be the drain for the fresh water tank. So when I open up this valve, then that's just gonna allow that water out um, onto the ground. Um, water pump is in here. I have a drain or a low point type drain that just allows that water to to fall out of the tank uh, out of the lines um, for maybe in between usages or pre winter is pre winterizing we can do that the water pump does have a canister filter here um, that uh, just catches any large particles or anything before it gets to the gets to the pump but, so you got a little room for some storage in here as long as it doesn't interfere with some of your plumbing. Uh, furnace is where the furnace uh, lives and it exhausts it, its heat and draws in its combustion air uh, from this side. So, furnace location. More storage. The inverter itself lives here, and the inverter has a battery disconnect here. So long-term storage, someone's going to work on the unit, 
I can turn the or disconnect the battery uh, from the inverter so it doesn't have access to that. This guy is where your house batteries live. And so there's a, a shelf there that uh, contains all of our house batteries. Um, so we can get to those and check and clean them easy. Okay. Back. Back. I have access to uh, my engine oil, my engine oil dipstick, transmission oil fill and dipstick. This is our power steering uh, reservoir, coolant, coolant overflow. My engine oil has its fill here, and this guy is the. Uh, indicator for the uh, air filter uh, for the chassis so that lets us know its condition um, and when it needs to be replaced the little yellow will move up there and let us know how hard it is to draw air through it and give us a clue there when we need to replace it Chassis batteries are in this compartment, so we have access to those. So our two starting or our chassis batteries are there. We have a few more 12 volt breakers. They are outside here on this compartment and they're typically protecting outside stuff. Our slide outs, our, um, and, and our, our entry step, for instance, some of those things that are, that are out here already. This last compartment, this is simply um, some chassis relays and fuses uh, um, behind this panel here. <clears throat> okay, this large tank is your DEF tank or your diesel exhaust fluid. Uh, the diesel exhaust fluid is something that your chassis uses through its um, exhaust system and it just ties up the uh, the particulates in the exhaust and gives us some cleaner cleaner emissions um, we have uh, obviously we have a gauge here at the tank that we can look at to see how full it is the dash also keeps track of it for you there's a def gauge up on the dash as well so this is something that you'll just go ahead and use until you know maybe you get down to almost empty then we'll go ahead and we'll fill it up. Um, they do recommend that you consume it all, or most of it all, instead of always topping it off so that we don't have some old stuff and some new stuff kind of all mixed in there and getting the wrong concentrations. Um, so this is probably something you'll be dealing with, you know, two or three times a year that you'll need to fill this tank depending on how many miles you're driving, but on the average, it's just a few times a year. Um, DEF is sold anywhere that sells diesel fluid. So if you went to this little gas station across the street, they probably got some gallon jugs inside. If you were at a uh, truck stop or one of a travel center, they'll have it even at the, no at the pump so that you can just put a nozzle in there and fill it up um, that way and buying it bulk. So it's readily available um, across the country. Short cord, short cord gets stored into here. So there's your power cord. Now your power cord, we can look at the pole a second. I saw that you had a power adapter in there. Um, so your power cord is a 50 amp cord and so it'll look like that on the end. And a guy can get an adapter that allows you to plug into a 30 amp outlet. You've reduced your power down, but you can do it, and you just now you have to manage yourself at 30 amps. And there's an adapter that can go on the end of that, 
that lets you plug into to the 20 amp outlet as well. Typically, it's advisable that whenever we're plugging or unplugging, it'd be a good idea like this one is flipped off and we can plug in or unplug and then when we're done, once we're plugged in, I can flip that breaker and then we get a good clean transfer of power, not, not a wobbly in and out kind of a connection that can cause some problems with our, with our unit. Now, you can see from back here, once we stepped away, when we did our leveling, I got the tires off the ground. So, mm. that's okay, but it's better to have the rear tires on the ground because that's our park brake, that's our anchor. I get the rear ones touching, so we, we would be fine. But if you're in a situation where tires need to leave the ground because we're extremely unlevel, it's best to let the fronts leave the ground and keep our rears landing. So this little dude up here simply gets us to the back of the refrigerator and back here there is a connection for uh, we can drain the water out of out of the uh, refrigerator so that would happen right here is that supposed to be loose yes because then I can bring this out and when I drain it, then I let all the water come outside oh out here like that. Our, our, our house or our water system has a canister filter in there that's catching any large particles um, for, the, uh, for the water system. And so we have this wrench that we can use to take off, take off that water filter. Um, our sewer connection so here we have our our sewer hose and I can take our cap off and put on our sewer hose and then I have my dump valves for my black and for my gray water so we would drain our black tank first and then when that is done I would close that valve back up and then I would pull my gray valve and allow my gray water to come out and then when I'm done, I'll close that back up. This system, uh, this unit is, has a uh, black tank flush. So we are able to hook up water here and that puts water into our black tank so that we can rinse or wash out the, the bottom of our tank. So, you know, whenever you feel like you need to, you can hook up to here. We can add some fresh water uh, to our tank to help to help rinse that out. Otherwise, our fresh water connection is here. While we're hooked up with our fresh water, our drinking water hose, while this valve, while this valve is in the normal position, we're allowing water from here to go and provide that water pressure to our motor home. While I rotate this down to tank fill, then I'm allowing water from here to go and fill my freshwater tank. So we can take on some water um, and fill up our freshwater tank. When our tank is full, it has a little vent out the top of the tank and we'll just see some water come out on the ground and then we'll know that our freshwater tank is full. And then I would turn it back up to normal uh, whenever I'm not doing tank filling. And of course our outside shower. <clears throat> Some more storage. In a lot of these compartments you see you can this pass through area down lower up high so you can get those longer items in there which is pretty helpful. What's in this one here? Oh that's that refrigerator one. The oh, back of that refrigerator. Okay. Okay, and then this one up here? And then this one up here is our water heater. So when I take this down, 
Then water heater has has this for a, a drain plug. So when I'm ready to uh, drain the water heater either for winterizing or maybe we're not going to use it for a while, I can take this drain plug out and uh, and drain it out and then go ahead and put it back in again. So we're going to control that water heater from inside, but uh, this is where it does all of its work out here. storage there. LP tank. So our LP uh, system is going to be here in this side so I can open and close my tank uh, through this valve. Uh, we also have a gauge here letting us know our tank level. And then this is where we'll pull up to to be filled at. So you, you'll pull up on this side and that's where they'll hook you up to fill uh, your, your system, your, your propane tank. We got a bunch of little storage in here as well. And a little bit of storage and some more uh, 12 volt breakers. So like our entry step, our awnings and those kinds of things are gonna be um, out here as well. So if something's not working, you can check a couple of these uh, areas and see, uh, see if there happens to be anything tripped. Is that anything? There are some chassis related relays uh, behind this cover. And then in this big whole area, that's where kind of Winnebago and chassis all kind of connect and there's a, it's full of wires. <laughs> and then in the hood area. Hood area here, get our prop rod up. There's a hole in the side here. Stick that in. But we have our washer fluid. We have access to generator. Generator, we can check its oil, check its water level. Generator does have an output breaker. It's this little switch here on the side. So maybe the generator's running, but we're not getting any power from it. There is a breaker on the generator that we can flip to, to correct that situation. front uh, the front of your motor home you can kind of see on these edges where the, the plastic masking is there's a protective masking on the front of this motor home and so bugs and rock chips and those kinds of things um, you got an extra layer of protection against that and bugs clean off a lot easier as you're collecting them as you go down the road and they'll scrub off a lot easier and won't stain or wreck the paint so those little, what I would call the, on that switch in there, the auxiliary lights, we got those um, down here outside. You can see you have your cameras on the mirrors for your side cameras. Those will come on when we, we talked about before when we do the um, turn signals. So kind of zip through this but do you think did you any questions that I didn't answer or that you might have had I think that's good that's good